All right. I think we're doing okay. Right? Yeah. Epic. Sweet. Hello, hello, everyone. I'm looking at the chat right now. There's a lot of unattended messages, so hello to everyone who's in. There's a lot of people. Um, hello, Adam. Welcome in. Um, yeah, there's lots of people here today. Hello. Um, glad to see everyone in early. Um, for bird anatomy, for uh, the bird stream, or the wing stream, I suppose. Hello, Bronson. Welcome in. Um, yes, birds. <laughs> We're going to be drawing lots of birds. Um, mostly wings, though. I guess it's like really, really focused on wings this time, because there's a lot more to wings than you might think. Hello, Sleepy Bun. And Magenta Magpie. Hoi. Oh, that's appropriate. <laughs> Welcome to the magpie rec welcoming to the stream. Um, but yeah, we're going to go over some skeletons. We're going to go over some birds. We're going to go over some... All right, yeah. We're going to go over lots of birds. We're going to go over skeletons. Um, but most of all, we're going to go over wings. And we're also going to lump bats and dragons kind of into there too, just so like we can go over them a little bit. Um, because it is kind of all the same um, in terms of like just a very basic structure. But... Before we get going, y'all know the drill. Um, if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds, and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links in to our social media in the description below. Um, and check out our website for our class offerings, because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us on Patreon, where you can get access to tons of perks, like my working files, critique sessions, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they are gone. Oh goodness, I, I popped out the chat this time so I could look at stuff at the same time. Barb. Yes, Barb. Oh, Grace is in. Hello, Grace. Uh, yes, Grace is one of our new instructors here at the studio. Um, glad you can make it in. All right. Birds. There's lots of stuff about birds. So let's talk a bit about them. Birds, despite what you may think, Birds aren't too different. From us. But. Are definitely. More different. than mammals. Glad to be here. Glad you're here too. Um, so birds aren't too different from us if you really, really look at them, but they are definitely more different than mammals, right? Um, so because we are mammals, obviously we're closer to the regular mammal, right? <laughs> um, but birds actually aren't as different as you might think when it comes to our skeletons, right? Uh-oh, don't worry. We're not that bad. Um, so skeletons... Main difference is arms become wings. Larger shifts in skeleton. Oop, lag. <laughs> Alright, so the main difference is that the arms become wings, right? And then there are larger shifts in the skeleton, right? So it's not all, like, exactly, exactly the same um, as mammals. So it's not as cohesive as mammals are. Um, but absolutely, the skeletons are quite similar. So let's take a look at them. I have prepared them this time. So, the skeletons, if we look at the bird compared to the human... Hey, hello, Adil Bava. Welcome in. I hope I pronounced that right. Right, so you can kind of take a look at, whenever you look at skeletons, right, of any kind, you can kind of try to point out the similarities between each of them, 
Murray. The biggest difference that you might notice, obviously, is that the rib cage is all the way down here, right? This is the rib cage of the bird. This is our rib cage, right? And the biggest difference, hmm, hello, Brunley. Uh, the biggest difference is this big shape right here. That's this shape on us. That's the sternum, right? The sternum is brought, it's like a giant chest plate, right? That's been brought down on the bird, right? So the bird uh, sternum is all the way down here while ours is right here. Obviously, we got the spine. The spine starts up here for the neck. Same place over here for us. And they've got a little bit of an extension of their tail dome. Ours just stays the same. And this is their pelvis, which is all the way down here. Ours is right here. Right? Overall, though, generally the same. And another thing you'll notice is that birds, we brought it up last week, right? Humans are plantigrade, right? So we have the heel of our foot all the way down on the ground. But birds, think of this as their knee. This is the heel back here. And these are the toes. Birds are digitigrade. Right? So birds are digitigrade. Which, if you remember from last week, if you were here, um, if you aren't, feel free to look at the live stream replay. Uh, but digitigrade means that you they stand on their toes, right? So their anatomy is slightly shifted. Think of this as their like heel of the foot, and this is their knee. So they stand on their toes compared to us who stand on the heels of our feet. All right, but overall, very very similar. Same kind of same difference. Let's actually put this in here just so I can move this all as well. There's another thing I want to mention when it comes to wings, though, because a lot of people tend to struggle with the shape of wings, right? Not necessarily just the feathers and all that fun stuff. We'll get over that, too. Don't worry. Um, but people always tend to struggle with the shapes of wings, right? Like, how do I know how it bends and blah, 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 all that fun stuff. So let's talk a little bit about that, right? If we look at a person's hand, like if we draw an arm. Let me draw just like a standard way too fast drawing of an arm, right? Let's say that this is a person. How you can translate this to a wing is if it's the same structure. The thumb is still there, by the way, and we'll get over that when we look at the skeleton a little bit further on the wings. But think of the fingers as if they've extended all the way down here, right? If we kind of take a look here, at this um, skeleton, I'm trying to get both of them in frame. Um, technically, birds only have three fingers, quote unquote, right? You got this one. Oh, hello, Amarilla. Welcome in, Amarilla. We will go over owls because when we go over all the different wings. Um, but you can kind of think of them as if they only have like two fingers right here. This is like their index. This is like their middle finger. And this is the thumb, right? So they do kind of have fingers. It's just it's a little bit different than ours, right? So you can always think of your wings as like an arm with really long fingers. <laughs> it's the exact same shape. It's just that the fingers are a lot longer. Same deal with, you know, dragons it, dragons and bats, right? But this time they do have all their, all their fingers. I think they only got four though, right? So then you can extend your fingers like that. It's almost like you're spreading them out a little bit further. And then you just got to put the the flaps of skin between them. And you got a perfectly good bat slash dragon wing. Hello, Lennox. Welcome in. Um, but straight up, this is how wings work, right? If you want to translate it from human to... Or from a, a bird to a person... The English pronunciation of your name sounds funny. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Um, three fingers scary. Three fingers are scary, but here, here's for everyone in the chat, right? Try picking something up with only three fingers. You can do it. I promise you. If you use your thumb, your pointer finger, and your middle finger, you can pick up anything. You can do everything. You only need three. Your last two fingers are there for support. So if you were to lose your last two fingers, like your pinky and your ring finger, you would live and you would be perfectly fine. <laughs> you just wouldn't have the same support. 
So bird, bird wings equal arms with long fingers. LOL. So burns, <laughs> legit, equals a hand with only three fingers. I was going to say RE8, but I didn't want to. <laughs> I was going to say, like, well, you know, Ethan is perfectly fine if, like, you know, his, his he lost his fingers, but it's okay. He can still operate. How big is this file? Ooh, I'm going to need to make this longer. Let's do that first before I, um, we're going to need to make this really long. Let's go with, like, 9,000. Yeah. Can move it all? Darn. I thought I could move them at the same time. Apparently not. Okay. You can write with fey fingers. Yes, you can. So, before we get into the different types of wings, there are five. Right? If you didn't know, there are five different types of wing shapes, because not every single bird has the exact same wing. Um, but every single bird does have the same kind of feathers, right? That you can somewhat boil down to the same for each one, right? So let's talk about feathers. So let me draw my very general looking wing. Apparently my very general looking wing is an active soaring wing, but you don't know what that means yet, unless if you know a lot about birds. Oops. Oops. Why did I make the brush so big? Maybe we can have some extra digits in case we lose one or two. Very true. But yeah, they are technically for support. So they're not 100% necessary, but... They're nice to have, I suppose. But yes, hello, Faye. Lovely studio director. Okay. Think of this as like our very basic... Very basic wing. Oh, I should actually make that smaller. So I can attach a bunch of arrows to it. So... Let's talk a bit about feathers, because there are lots of different types of feathers, right? I'm going to make it as simple as possible, because I don't want to say every single name, because that's going to get really long, and I don't want that to happen. So, they come in handy. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> so, when you are drawing wings, overall, there are a good, like, three to four different layers of feathers. We're going to be drawing the outer side of the wings, right? So the back of the wings, right? Not the inside, um, but the outside, right? The inside is really like these main feathers here, and then there's like covering, right? That's like feathery down, right? If you don't know what down is, it's the extra kind of feathers underneath the pretty feathers that make keep them warm. Um, but we're talking about, we're talking about the wings. So we'll, we'll start from the back of the wing. We won't really get onto the inner wing. We'll just start from the back of it. These big feathers that are on the outside here, they kind of end around here. There's usually more than the amount I'm giving them right now. Um, I think there's like 12 usually, 12 or so of these feathers. But let's pretend that I have drawn 12. I lied, I'm drawing passive soaring wings. Um, these feathers, you know what, yeah, let's just do this. These feathers are your primary feathers. Right, so these ones at the tip of the wings are the primary feathers. Let's go into these next sets down here. So this is like the joint, the second joint, right? If this is where the hand starts, this is now the forearm going in there, right? So the, let's say that this is the forearm bit of the wing, right? We'll say that this is the quote-unquote forearm bit of the wing. These are your secondary feathers. And then the next set, closer to the inside, that are all kind of layered very, very close together. This is what kind of helps the transition from the, <laughs> from the body to the wing. 
this is your, these are your tertiary feathers. Right, so those are the most important ones, right? If you think of an airplane, these secondary feathers are what help the bird steer, right? Most of the time. These ones are what help them hover, I believe. Um, if I remember correctly, I don't 100% remember, but <laughs> something like that. But we're not really here to learn the full science behind it. More so just how to draw them, right? You don't need to know exactly what these feathers do. So the next one, there's kind of the next layer of feathers that come in. There are two layers here, and then there are three extra here, and then one extra here. All right, so we'll go with this one first. These ones, these inner ones right here. Okay, I lied, I am doing every single one. Actually, no, I won't do all of these ones because they're all kind of the same. These are your primary coverts. And then there's a little row of feathers kind of right here. It's like three of them. There's like three feathers right here that kind of overlay like that. These are the Alula. Alula. These are the feathers that are attached to the quote-unquote thumb of the bird, right? So if you can think of, like, again, that hand, these are the feathers that are attached to the thumb, and the rest of them is the hand. The rest of the hand. So you can kind of think of it like that. ever seen a wet owl? They look special. Have you ever seen an owl without its feathers? It looks like an alien. So we have our secondary feathers here. Above the secondary feathers, there's a bunch of different layers of feathers here. Right? There's maybe one, and then there's two, And then there's three. All of these extra ones in here, this whole area right here, I'm actually going to use a color like that. This whole area in here is our secondary coverts. They all technically have names. I'm not going to go over them. They're all the secondary coverts. It's just they all have another word in front of them each time. Well, now I want to know what a featherless owl looks like. You can you can look it up. <laughs> Owls have long legs. Yeah, they do. <laughs> oh, you looked it up, Adam. LOL. Sorry, man. If it makes you feel any better, I think it's a sculpture. It's not an actual owl. But if you saw the one, you regret your decision. They make great inspiration for aliens. Owls make great inspiration for aliens. And then the final layer of feathers that I am going to talk about. Kind of layers like that. Something like that. And these are the scalpulars. Scalpulars. Alright, so these are your feathers that generally come onto a bird that you see on 90% of birds. Right? Obviously they don't look exactly like this. There's more uh, nuance to them, but the structure is generally the same. Sometimes, depending on the type of feather, they'll be bigger or smaller. All feathers. Contribute. To... Helping a bird fly size and position changes. Be 
based on wing type. Hello, soft boy with an epic Karapika uh, profile picture. Hello, welcome in. Welcome. To, look at that rainbow wing. Happy Pride Month. Heck yeah, happy Pride Month, y'all. This month is yours. But yeah, so all feathers of the wing contribute to helping a bird fly, and the size and position of each feather, each feather grouping, will change depending. Actually, this should be changed a little bit. Each, um, the size and position will change based on the wing type and the type of bird. But overall, kind of the same. Hello, Gabriel. Welcome in. Ah, and love that. Love that. All right. Now. Let's get into the wings. So, this is the part that I like. <laughs> when we talk about all these fun kinds of wings, because I love drawing wings. Um, I had to research these recently, actually, so I kind of have them fresh in my brain. Um, so let's talk about all those wings. Let's divide this section. And sections up. Wings. Let's call this number one. Number one are your passive soaring wings. I'm late. It's okay, Angela. Welcome in. Um, glad you could hear. Glad you could be here. Regardless, I hate wings. Heck yeah, you do. So do I. Um, passive soaring wings. So this is your first style. Don't worry, you haven't missed too much. You just kind of missed the feather explanation and the skeletons, but... but yes, to our passive soaring wings... Oops, I didn't save this demo yet. I thought I saved this file. Hmm, apparently I didn't. That's fine. Uh, this is stream 19. Okay, so your passive soaring wings have long, have long primary feathers. And there are slots in the feathers. that catch thermals. Catch thermals. And thermals, thermals, are columns of hot air. That allows that allows the bird to soar higher. All right, so your passive soaring wings have really long primary feathers. So that's this one, right? This kind of sections. So they have really long primary feathers and the slots. There are slots in these feathers. So there are spaces between these primary feathers. And those help uh, these birds catch thermals or columns of hot air that kind of come up from the ground. And this allows the bird to soar just a little bit higher, like a glide suit, kind of like a glide suit. But there's another type of wing that it mimics that a little bit better. <laughs> So these passive soaring wings are generally had by, the writing is clean. Hello, Phoenix. Welcome in. This is my messy writing. I would have written it. For... This is like my fast writing. Um, this is generally caught by eagles. Passive soaring win wings are what eagles, hawks. vultures, and other birds have, right? But those are the kind of the primary ones. So let's look at a bird with those kinds of 
feathers. If you notice off to the side here, a lot of these names look familiar, and that's because I chose a bunch of birds that kind of, you know, corresponded to those types of feathers. So let's look at the bearded vulture, which is the bird that I wish won the poll, but it didn't, so that's okay. So <laughs> this is the bearded vulture. It's one of the largest vultures, and people like to call it the dragon bird because it looks a lot like a dragon. Again, I wish this one won, <laughs> but it didn't, uh, so that's okay. But you can see what I mean by those really big... Um, there's really big spaces between the feathers, right? Especially over here, you can look between the primaries of this bird, and they're really, really far apart, and that really helps it soar very, very large distances, or it helps it soar very, very high. This bird is also known as the bone-eating bird because it will eat bones. Um, this bird is hardcore. I love <laughs> the bearded vulture. Um, I changed my mind. It's okay. Um, this is why you look up all the animals that I put in there. I love zoology. Um, but it's okay. We're still going to draw the snowy owl. Um, but yeah, so these are also known as like the bone eaters um, because they eat bones. But yeah, the bearded vulture. It looks like a real life dragon. Um, too late though. Yeah, it's a little too late. It's okay. This is a cautionary tale. Look up look up the animals that I put on there. <laughs> Where they live, they want to put some out of the wild again. Sorry, but owls. Yeah, I like owls. I'm just like, they're not my favorite bird, but I do really like owls. I think, I don't know what my favorite bird is, but I really, really love birds. I really like this bearded vulture, obviously. Um, I really like, I'm a big fan of crows, but we'll get to crows when we get to ellipticals. Um, okay, number two. I'm sorry. I'm from India. Hello. You vulture for the vulture. Yeah, you did, Faye. <laughs> sorry, Caps. It's alright. The bone eaters in the wild? Oh, yeah. They're in the wild. They can lift up small children. That's how big these birds are. <laughs> but welcome in. Glad you could make it. Um, Devat Krishna. All right, number two. So it's the FBI, LOL. These are active soaring wings. Yo, hello, Gigi. Welcome in. Six of crows are the best. Oh, it's 1.30 a.m. where you are. It's four o'clock over here. So next up is our active soaring wings. Crows are amazing. Yeah, they are. I'm not sure who six of crows are, but I'm certain they're great. So your active soaring wings are have super long and narrow wings. Very long. And narrow. And narrow wings. These allow the birds to soar for very long periods of time. I'm a student, I need money for a fee, so I started to make anime. Understandable. Commissions take a while to build up traction, though. However, active soaring wings are very dependent. On wind currents. To fly. No, you are my teacher. All right. I think I'm a lot of people's teacher currently. <laughs> so active soaring wings are super, super long and super, super narrow. These 
wings help birds to soar for very long periods of time, and they're very dependent on wind currents to fly, which is a downside, right? You'll notice these birds that have active soaring wings don't flap their wings very often because they are usually depending on the current that is around them, the wind current, to help them soar around. Crow 64. Heck yeah, Crow 64. That one, I know. I hope they find the dude. All right. <laughs> I don't know if the next part of the puzzle has been solved yet, but I, I hope so. That ARG rules. Um, so the birds that have these kinds of feathers are albatross, gulls, gannets, and often most kinds of seafaring birds, right? So a lot of birds that you might see by water end up being, you know, Active soar have active soaring wings, and the reason for that is because usually a lot of great wind currents happen around the water, right? <laughs> water is very affected by the wind, so they'll see a lot of stuff like that. Um, so this next bird is the albatross, right? You can think of the albatross- oh goodness. You can think of the albatross as a fancy, a, a prettier seagull, <laughs> but these things are huge. Their wingspan, I believe, is up to about 20 feet. I could be wrong. It's a really, really long wingspan, but you notice, right? Yeah, you can think of albatross or like fancier seagulls, right? They're bigger. Think of like the size of a of an eagle, but it's a it's like a seagull, right? So it's like a seagull, if you supersize a seagull. But once again, you'll notice right? These wings, super, super long and super, super thin. And this is what helps it glide very, very far, right? This length and this thin kind of nature is what allows it to soar for very, very long periods of time and allows it to, you know, hover very nicely on wind currents. So those are the active soaring wings. I think I'm going to need to, oh, yes, I am. This is going to be a long file, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, maybe we can double the width. No, let's just change the height some more. You guys are gonna have to deal with how long this thing is. <laughs> okay. Moving what I can. Epic. A part of Horizon Team for Mark Rover Challenge URC had you say. Interesting. Okay. So the next nice one. <laughs> The next set of wings we are going to be talking about are ellipticals. Yeah, this one's going to go on for a while, guys. <laughs> All these explanations are going to go on for a while. Don't worry. This is, I think these are, um, they're, after this one, there are two more types of wings. And we'll talk about owls for a little bit because they're a little bit different. Um, elliptical wings are best for short bursts of speed. Elliptical wings are the best for short bursts of speed. They allow for tight maneuvering. And fast. Takeoffs. But the speed cannot be maintained. T 
Don't worry, Jesse. This is research. All right, sick. Um, so your elliptical wings are best for short bursts of speed, and they allow for really tight maneuvering and fast takeoffs, but the speed cannot be maintained. So they can go really fast, they can take off really fast, and they can maneuver around things really, really easily, um, but their speed cannot be maintained. So their speed isn't quite as... Um, you know, they can't, like, they can have really fast takeoffs, but they can't keep that speed forever. So the birds that have elliptical wings, if you want some more, uh, wow, what's the word? Examples, there we go, <laughs> are swifts, ducks, falcons, Turns, sandpipers, and so on and so forth. There are lots of birds that have elliptical wings. And the elliptical bird that we are going to be talking about is the pied crow. Now this is one of... Fun fact, this is a crow that is technically legal to have as a pet. Don't have crows as pets. <laughs> um... Right? Yeah. Oh, lol. No, these are the wrong birds. I was looking at the wrong set of text. I was like, that doesn't sound right. No, these are not. Those are the high speed birds. I just realized. The birds that are <laughs> elliptical. There we go. I was looking at the wrong side. Are crows. I have my research off to the side. I know a lot of this off the top of my head, but not all of it. There's a lot more to them meets the eye. I have no idea there's much work needed behind a bird's drawing. Thank you for your class. Of course, yeah, there's lots of things that you need. <laughs> Our crows, ravens, ah, that's better. Crows, ravens, blackbirds. And sparrows. Right? My bad. So these are the elliptical wings. I put the wrong birds there. LOL. Um, but... Once again, these are what elliptical wings are kind of like. So elliptical wings also have that kind of, they can kind of have those spaces between the feathers over here, but you'll notice that they're very flat kind of around the bottom, a little more arched on the top, right? When you look at a lot of these wings, you can probably look up images of them. I'm not drawing them just for the sake of time, <laughs> um, but you'll notice that these ones tend to be a little bit shorter and a little bit plumper, right? These ones tend to be kind of long and intense and graceful. These ones are really, really long. Um, but these guys tend to be a little bit shorter. Their wings are a little bit stumpier. Pied crow is my favorite type of crow. Yeah. So emo birds, basically, yes. What type of wings are blue jays? Blue jays, I believe, are high speed, which is what we'll get into next. Um, yeah, I believe blue jays are high speed, if I had to think. You're laughing every time. I laugh at everything, man. All right. Oop, that's the wrong color. Number four, high-speed wings. So these wings are long and thin. But are not as long. Nope. Not as long. As active. Soaring wings. These high speed wings obviously are incredibly fast. But this time, they can maintain it. For long. Periods. Of time. 
Right, so your high speed wings are long and thin, but they are not as long as active soaring wings. So they're still long, but not nearly as long as like a seagull's wings or something like that. Um, and these wings, obviously, based on the name, they are incredibly fast and they can maintain the speed for long, long periods of time. Right? So I kind of already wrote down these birds <laughs> by accident, but these ones are the swifts, ducks, falcons, terns, sandpipers, so on and so forth, right? Generally, all these little birds that you kind of see around you, a lot of them tend to be high speed wings. Um, blue jays, I believe, are... Um, they're either high speed or elliptical. I'm not 100%. Oh, you know what? No, I think blue jays are elliptical. Now that I'm thinking about it. But, you know, kind of the same deal. I believe that kingfishers are also high speed wings. But, here's another bird that I kind of wished would win. That I kind of wished would win. But it's okay. Um, this is me being a little bit grouchy. This is the American Kestrel. Really, really cute. Think of like a chibi falcon. That's what the Kestrel is. <laughs> it's, so, it's very small and very fluffy. Um, but the Kestrel is one of the fastest birds. Um, I think it is a cousin of the falcon. Um, but again, right, these high speed wings, right, they are quite long compared to the stubby nature of the elliptical wings, right? These wings are quite long and thin to help with speed, but not, they aren't as intense as um, active soaring wings where they don't need to rely on wind currents quite as much for their wings. Um, but yes, kestrels, very, very cute. Um, yeah, think of it as like a chibi, a chibi falcon. They're very small. If you kind of think of like the size of a rabbit, they're a little bit smaller than, like, a fully grown rabbit. So they're very, very tiny birds, but they are, like, a deadly predator. Fat burb. Fat burb. He's a fluffy burb. And last but not least, the final kind of wing that we are talking about. This is the last one, I promise. The final kind of wing we are talking about is hovering wings. So hovering wings are small and quick. Quick. There we go. So the nerves and muscles Your back was eating. Welcome back. Uh, so the nerves and muscles are adapted. For incredibly fast movement. And really, the only bird, I think there's more than this, but the only bird that I can really think of that has these wings are hummingbirds. Right, so your hovering wings tend to be very, very small and very, very quick. Um, and the nerves and muscles within this bird and these wings are adapted for incredibly fast movement so that the bird can hover, right? The only way that other birds can hover is if they have a proper gust of wind for it, right? Active soaring birds can kind of hover in place, but not as well as hummingbirds. And here is where our last bird is, the ruby-throated hummingbird, which is kind of very, very common. Which is quite common, right? It's a very common type of bird. But once again, these wings, very, very small and very, very speedy. And they're very, very light so that they can move them very, very fast. They tend to be kind of in the shape of a triangle of sorts. So that's what these hummingbirds are for. But last but not least, let's talk about owls. Owl. Oh, owl. Oh, yes, I love hummingbirds. Very shy birds. Owls are a strange exception.
because they don't fit 100% into any of these categories. We're not going to be talking about owls for too long, um, but I, I am drawing an owl for the last thing. Um, however, wing types, most similar to passive soaring. And elliptical. So they're kind of in between those two. Some of them are a little bit more stubby. Um, some of them are a lot wider. But overall, they're not 100% able to fit into any of these categories most of the time. Um, so their wing types, if you had to guess, are probably the most similar to passive soaring and elliptical. That's <laughs> exactly what I've been waiting for. But look at how long that file is. With that said... That's our explanation on birds. <laughs> so those are all the different bird stuff. Don't worry if you didn't write down any of this. This will be available on our Discord later. Um, and when we reach the top of the hour, we'll talk a bit about that. Um, but all of this will be available as a JPEG to download afterwards. So if you didn't take any notes, don't worry. You weren't here for the whole thing. Don't worry. It'll be up as well. Um, but with that said, let's move on to the final illustration. Now, I said that I... I think last week I said that I was going to do one of my characters as this. If I did Mo last week, then I was going to do Grayson this week. I think I remember saying that. Oops. Oh, no, let's make this a different size. Let's make this... Yeah, okay. Now, because wings are so, like, related to arms, there's two ways that I could do this, right? When you blend a person with a bird, there's two ways that you can think of this, right? Is It's the same way that you would draw somebody with four arms, right? You can either have it so then um, the wings come out of their back, like from... The, uh, like from the shoulder blades, or you can replace their arms all together with the wings. It's like, could I do that? Yeah, technically, but in terms of aesthetic, I kind of just want to stick to <laughs> them coming out of their shoulder blades. Um, so that means I'm going to be drawing this character from behind, not from the front. Um, but, with that being said, Man, once again, I prepare so much, and then I forget to get a reference image. So we... And for those of you who are not part of the poll or don't know what was happening here, um, we had a poll to see which bird I would be drawing for this demo, and the snowy owl is the one that won. So I will be drawing the snowy owl today. Let's see here. Yeah, because they have very, very large, long wings. So it's like they're passive. They look like passive soaring, but some of them are not like that. It's like kind of a strange mix between the two. And a lot of them don't have spaces between their primary feathers to help them fly a lot um, quieter. So it's like they don't have those spaces that primary um, or that passive soaring wings do. So it's closer to elliptical. But then you're like, okay, well. <laughs> uh huh. Sorry, I'm trying to save this image off to the side here. Epic swag. Let's click on this. And there we go. So, we'll be looking at this reference down here. Mostly because it shows the entire wing, and that's what I want. I want the patterns of this wing. Okay. Okay. 
Oh goodness, a lot of the chat is restoring right now. Okay. So like I mentioned, I'm going to be drawing this character from behind compared to the front. So I'll have a better chance of drawing the shoulder blades. A lot of owls fans. Favorite species I adore? Barn owls. I'm actually a very big fan of um, great horns, which is also kind of boring. <laughs> I really love great horns. I'm there's one that I really like too. It's like pygmy something. I really like um, burrowing owls as well. For you, it's definitely the snowy. I understand. Snowy's pretty good too. I just like how fluffy their feet are. <laughs> their little talons. Yeah, what a lot of people do is they have like the shoulder blades and they attach, especially when people draw forearms um, in a funkier way, they tend to attach the The wings there. Hello, Dudu. Welcome in. And I'm doing all right. Hope you're doing good as well. Depending on time as well, I may not be able to get to coloring, but I mean, it's a snowy owl. It's basically black and white already. So I mean. <laughs> You got there because of the Guardians of Gahul. Oh man, that was my childhood book series. I used to read the Guardians of Gahul like daily. And I read, I think I finished the whole series. I don't 100% remember. Or I finished most of it at least. So yeah, I was super into owls back then as well when I first read them. And I really liked that movie too when I was younger. And then I got older and I watched it again. And I barely remember it now, but... <laughs> Yeah, the Guardians of Gahul is what got me into owls as a kid, too. So again, kind of going off of the really long... wingspan here. Hello, Blood Rio. Welcome in. Same finish the books and one of the audiobooks. Movie's just pretty okay. I don't know. I just never left my owl addiction phase. That's all right. I never left my zoology phase, I suppose. Though for the past few days, I have been mourning the uh, the delay of God of War. So that's what's been consuming me as of late. Sorry, whenever I go quiet, it means I'm kind of focusing. <laughs> I don't mean to go quiet for really long periods of time. I'm just like, uh, okay, how do I fix this? Um, but yeah, no, I think like, like birds are really cool. I have a bird, right? Um, my bird medley and she like, She's a very screechy and angry bird, but, um, yeah, as much as I love birds, I still think that my favorite animal is the fennec fox. It's hilarious that I didn't put that in the poll and I put an arctic fox instead, but if I had chosen a fennec fox, I would have been too tempted to draw my fennec fox, so see. 
<laughs> stream, I was hoping for Jesse to draw a canvas with wings. Understandable. I'll draw one for you afterwards, dude. Just cause you're in you're in the uh the Discord. Can I ask a doubt? Do you mean can I can you ask a question? You can always ask stuff. Fennec. Fennecs are spelled with a C in English, I suppose. It might be different in a different language. What's the name of my bird? My bird's name is Medley. M-E-D-L-I-L-I. -L -I. It's the name of the Wind Sage from Legend of Zelda the Wind Waker. <laughs> Discord privileges. Yeah, Discord privileges. We'll go over some of those privileges in like five minutes. Snowy owl legs are great because they're like big and fluffy so I can like cover up a lot of the toes here. Once again, come from the spine when we do that fun stuff. Sorry, wrong language again. That's all good. It's fun to hear it in different languages. Or read it in different languages, I suppose. Hello, Gabriel. Welcome in. I'm drawing Snowy Owl. Oh, I said we would talk about dragons. Oh, well, I didn't really get to that. Um, I kind of got to their wings, though. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about dragons while I'm drawing, because now I can. Um, the fun thing with dragons is that, you know, when people um, first discovered or conceived dragons, you know, they um, they didn't necessarily think, like, or they, they found dinosaurs. That's what they found. They found dinosaur bones, and they were like, yo! dragon bro right it's like that's, that's what it's gotta be it can't be anything else right obviously it's a, it's a dinosaur right um but because of that dragons have a f far more similar anatomy to birds than they do lizards right it's like if you ever want to look up images to reference for dragons a lot of the times people turn to birds because they have a very similar foot structure and they have a very similar you know wing structure obviously so when you're drawing dragons, it's best to look up a bird instead of a reptile. <laughs> so if you ever want, like, if you're ever kind of struggling with dragon feet, or you're struggling with wings, you look up birds and bats and all that because they're clo more closely related. You know, the fun thing about this is that their their feathers are very, very ovular. These all kind of fold. I've never been good at the wing, the feathers folding. Your second name is Barn Owl in German. Interesting. You know, Yule of Owl. You hadn't thought about Schler. You from Germany? There's people from all over in this chat. The studio is in Canada. You love Germany? I've never been. I'd love to go to a lot of places in the world. Obviously, I can't right now, but, you know. <laughs> I'd love to one day. I will. I love drawing wings, dude. Like it's so much fun. I, I always, whenever people tell me, it's like I can't believe you like drawing wings, and I'm like, dude, you don't understand how much I love drawing wings. It's so much fun. It's just like we Germans love to put words together to create new words. Yule is owl, and I can't pronounce that one. Is a white thing of their face. I see. Interesting. Language is a beautiful thing. Sucks I can only speak one of them. <laughs> one day I'll learn another, maybe. Did you visit 
did you visit Derry in Canada, the set of the movie? I'm not sure. I don't think so. No, I've never visited the set of the movie. I mean, Canada is huge, right? Like, not, I don't think a lot of people understand that, right? For the all in America, right? Here's a, here's a fun fact, right? I've been across Canada, right? So I've traveled from one end of Canada to the other end of Canada, right? Width-wise. Fly from where I am to the other side of Canada than it does to fly from where I am in Canada to the Dominican Republic on the other hemisphere of the, of the Earth, right? <laughs> so think of how large Canada is with that in mind, Right? If you want a, like a perspective when it comes to uh, our provinces, right? Because we have provinces, we don't have states um, for y'all in America. It takes a full day to drive from province to province, right? If I were to go to the province next to me, right? It would take a full day to drive. <laughs> oh, it was filmed in Ontario, so it's close. Oh, in Port Hope. Okay, I see. I've heard Canadians are really polite. Um, I'd like to think we are, but some of us aren't. I mean, I guess that's just kind of how it is for a lot of people. But yeah, compared to a compared to other places I've been, I think Canada is one of the more polite ones. There was a movie that was filmed in my high school and Matt Damon ended up showing up um, to film it. Oh man, I forget what it was called, but it was the one where like all those people like shrunk down. If one of y'all know it, let me know. Oh, you're from Kerala, India. Known as God's Own Country. Interesting. Yeah, we in Canada. We really are an international chat. Heck yeah. Oh, that's five o'clock. Okay, wait. Let me finish this face then. And then let's talk a bit about the studio. It's cool to hear people from other other parts of the world, you know? I'd love to visit outside of the kind of half of the world I'm in. The farthest I've ever been from where I live is, like, Dominican. <laughs> I used to travel across Argentina. It's a huge country, too. My father used to work in a prefecture, so I always had to move from province to province. Many days of travel. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think Canada is one of the largest land masses. So it's, like, we're pretty big. We also have states. Or I can't pronounce that. I'm so sorry. Um, but I see you have states as well. Yeah, we got provinces. When you go to Canada, I'll see you, sure. I don't, I mean, our whole studio is in different sections, so. May take years, perhaps. Great to have so many art nerds from all around the world join. Heck yeah, Grace. That's what I love about the internet. Meet so many people around the world. Yeah, a lot of my internet friends are from different corners of the world. I, I lied. Let me finish this hair and then we'll get to the <laughs> we'll get to talking a bit about the studio. Instagram account. Well, there's one for the Wing Canvas channel and then there's I have one as well. Oh, you want the Instagram account of the channel? Well, that's at Wing Canvas. That's the studio account. So if you wanted to check out the Instagram account of the studio, it's literally just at Wayne Canvas. I've seen Grayson as a bird. Heck yeah. 
if you want to see more of this character, that's my account. So <laughs> that's not a... <laughs> that's not the Wing Canvas account, but... Oh, my poor boy. I've always thought of him as more of a cat. I guess that's why, like, whenever I drew him as an AC villager, I drew him as a cat villager. But yeah, this character and the character from last week are both from uh, the webcomic that I'm currently rewriting. Um, a few of you have asked to let you know when... Haha, <laughs> the pages are releasing, and that's on the 21st. That's next week. Or next, next week. Chris, <laughs> it's becoming lots of different animals for the streams. It was Mo last week. Um, but the cast certainly is, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's Daisy next week. That's the that's the the reptile one, isn't it? How can I get work for three D modeling? I am not a three D modeler. I used to be, um, but I haven't three D modeled in ages. <laughs> um, that's not our channel, though. We don't do three D modeling here. Um, we are all two D digital. Two um, D. There's lots of tutorials for three D art, um, but unfortunately, that's not what our channel is. Um, we stick to the two D. So that's like, um, we work in Medibang, which is the free one. Um, my actual program that I work in most of the time is Photoshop. If you want to see me work on it, join the Discord. That's when we have secret streams sometimes. Um, but yeah. Can we get from LinkedIn? LinkedIn is a place where you share your work profiles, so not necessarily um, where you get lessons. I haven't used LinkedIn in ages. <laughs> I think I was told to make a LinkedIn once, and then I haven't touched it since. It's probably so outdated. I think the last time I touched it, I was 18. So that was a long time ago. I mean, it wasn't that long ago, but still. That sounds like I'm trying to save myself. I promise, guys. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. Oof, that's off. I can already tell before I flip it horizontally. This should not be as extended here. Uh... Over time as well, at some point, you kind of get to a point where you can automatically tell when you look at something, you don't really need to flip horizontally anymore. That's a superpower I've, I've learned to obtain. Even still, when I flip horizontally, I can see mistakes, but... Or see extra mistakes, but when I don't flip... Yeah, see? That was too wide last time I did it. Alright. But we kind of finished the head there. So let's talk a bit about us. If you didn't know, if you're kind of new to the channel, never seen what we do before, we are, I keep saying we, and that's because it's not just me. I am one of the many people here at the studio because we are a studio. We are an art school. So if you would like to check out um, the classes that we offer, um, check out the link to our website in the description. Um, there you can check out the classes that I teach. I am one of the teachers, lovely Faye, who keeps popping up as one of the instructors, and Grace, who pops up, is one of our new instructors. Um, so if you'd like to check out the classes that we offer, feel free to do so there. We are also offering summer camp pretty soon. Um, so if you'd like to see what those classes are, feel free to check those out. And this file, along with this one, both of them in their entirety as JPEGs, will be available on our Discord. So if you'd like to join the Discord, be sure to check out more links in the description. Um, that way you can see um, this file as a JPEG when it's complete and the other file as a JPEG when it... Um, and we can upload them there. You can save them, do them, save them, keep them, do whatever you want with them. Just don't repost them. They're all yours. But if you would like the, there's going to be layers on this one. There's going to be layers on this one. And there are layers on this one too. If you'd like access to those layers, you are going to have to join our Patreon. Where we upload our working files every other week. Where you can keep them, save them, do whatever you want with them. And you'll be able to see my um, progress. Or my process work. Because it's usually really beneficial to see the artist's process. So you can kind of learn how to do it too. Um, but yeah, other than that, let's keep going. Wow, wow. I don't even know what LinkedIn is. LinkedIn is like, um, it's a place where you share like your your job stuff. Um, how do I explain it? <laughs> I haven't used LinkedIn in a really long time. Hello, other adults in the chat, <laughs> please help me. <laughs> I don't know how to explain LinkedIn. Um, our studio doesn't have a LinkedIn, if you're wondering, um, and I haven't touched mine in ages. 
Because we got an Instagram, but uh, we don't. I don't think we use a LinkedIn. Because as I mentioned, it's not just me. There's tons of us. I'm thinking of just creating a hoodie because, uh, why not? Like a professional Facebook. Ah, nice. Gotta go. Okay, that's fine. Thanks so much for joining, Adam. LinkedIn is a network for professionals. Pretty much, I suppose. I think Grace did it. It's like Grace got it. Like professional Facebook. I guess that's kind of what it is. So I don't think we got that, but we do have a Facebook. I haven't touched Facebook in years, so. I think the only time I've ever touched Facebook was like when my dad would let me go on his account and I could play all the, the games. There was a there was a game that was on Facebook when I was a kid. It was called Happy Aquarium, and I would just <laughs> try to get the best fish. <laughs> I know that one of my seniors working for two hours in the Blender software in Clip Studio, and he gets near 500k. You sh you can't think about money when you do art. Like art is such a big like, what if you know? You got to do art for the sake of loving art. You know, if you try to do art for nothing but money, you're gonna burn out so fast because you need to be good at it. A, B, you need to like. You need to work. I mean work. You gotta be, like, really interested in what you're doing. For art, you gotta love it. You really gotta love it in order to do it as a profession. So art isn't something where you can just kind of think you can get a quick buck out of it. Because the person that makes 500k a year is one in a million. It's the same as being a YouTuber, right? It's a one in a million chance that you're gonna get money like that. Oh, we. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear my headphones cut out. Um, hello, Yuri, another one of our lovely instructors. LinkedIn is where you post your professional experience, more like a resume. Ah, very true. Uh, it works for a game company. Oh, once again, you really gotta love it if you want to work as a game artist. I went to school to be a game artist for about a year, and I didn't love it enough, um, so I switched to working on comics, because that's what I do love working on more. Um, game art is one of the grindiest arts that you could possibly get part be part of. Once again, like you gotta really love it in order to be a game artist, because you're gonna spend, especially if it's for a big company, you're gonna spend nights working like crazy you're gonna be under a lot of pressure there's gonna be crunch hours which is unfortunate you know it's one of those things just because it's normal doesn't mean it's ethical or good right but you know that's one of the more unhealthy things about the the game art workforce one question would you prefer being famous and strange to a larger audience or stick with around the 20 to 30 people i am okay either way honestly um, like, I just like interacting with people. <laughs> I like the interaction and I like, you know, kind of speaking to people, whether that's a really big crowd or a smaller crowd, I'm okay with either. It's like, I am definitely okay with this crowd of just 30 or 20 of the 30 though. Cause it's, it's very chill. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he's a background artist and the modeler. Yeah. Background artists and modelers usually don't make that much. Sorry, I'm just, like, speculating a little bit. Um, yeah, a background artist and modeler, their salary is not 500 from what I know. Um, it's more like 50k at the max, usually. It's not usually 500000 but um, yeah, same deal, man. It's like, you can't think about money in this kind of aspect. If you, you gotta love it, and if you, if you don't love art, if you're thinking of the money and not much else when it comes to art, you're gonna get burnt out really fast, and I mean really fast, you know? It's the same thing with, like, creating stuff that you're not, like, um super passionate about when it comes to art, right? 
Um, for those of you who are aspiring for like web comics and games and whatever, make sure that you're aspiring for the right thing. You know, make sure you're doing it because you love it, not because you're trying to gain something from it. Gaining something should be like a bonus, I suppose. Because if you're constantly trying to aim for something that's like a one in a million shot, you're gonna be severely disappointed, most likely. <laughs> not to be a downer, but you know. I'd actually want more people to know about the wing canvas, but on the other side, I'm really happy with the small chill community we have here. Yeah. It is kind of nice to be on this, this side of small YouTube, I suppose. All right, 45-ish minutes. Oh yeah, I can do that. That's not too bad. Yeah, I have to draw wings a lot. Sorry, not 50k Indian dollars. Ah, yes. Okay. Hey Amen. Do what you love. Yes. Coming from our studio director. <laughs> but yeah, around 50k kind of makes sense. It's That's like kind of the average. Uh, even that's kind of high sometimes. Hey Lou, are you from Japan? No, she's our studio director. Just you realistic. I try to be realistic. <laughs> I think I scare my art mentorship students sometimes. From Canada, yeah. Faye Lou is our lovely studio director. Faye is my boss. Um, we, the, the, this whole studio is based in Canada. So most of the people that you see in the studio are Canadian. Canada's really diverse, so we got a lot of diverse people. People from all over. If you want to know my nationality, technically I am Chinese. Um, that's like, my blood, if you really wanted to boil it down, is half Chinese, half Filipino. Uh, born in Canada. My dad, who is Chinese, was born in Jamaica, so I have second Jamaican cousins. And then my mom, who's Filipino, also has German and Spanish blood. So technically, if I really had to put it all together, I am Canadian, Filipino, German, Chinese, Spanish. <laughs> my dreams are crushed now. I'm sorry. I wait for advertising for money. Hated my life when I was doing. I missed illustration and teaching because I love people. Yeah, absolutely. I think when I was in game art, I was kind of chasing the wrong thing. Like, looking back on it retrospectively, I think I was chasing the wrong thing. And I th it, it was funny because I started working on a comic while I was in school. And then I was, like, midway through it, I was like, yo, actually, this is a lot more fun. <laughs> I think I like this more. And I guess I should have seen it coming because, like, my whole childhood was spent, like, writing and illustrating comics and creating characters and stuff like that, right? And I was like... Man, I guess I should have seen this coming, but oh well. <laughs> I guess. Is that data free in Canada? No! Absolutely not. Internet is not free in Canada. <laughs> when it comes to feathers, even though there's a lot of layers of them, especially if you're rendering out something in full, pick and choose which feathers you're actually going to draw because sometimes you can just kind of get away with a little bit of this because feathers usually lay down pretty flat and you won't be able to see every single layer anyway so don't rely on your lines for everything usually it's better to rely on your color for certain areas as well that's why i'm not drawing every single layer of the feather Ah, you're a student university and you love animation. That's why you're watching this class. Yeah, my best friend is an animator. I can't... I am bad at animation. <laughs> In theory, I can do animation. And I did it for about a year. And then I'm, I'm still bad at it. So <laughs> that's great if you like animation. Yuri, who pops up every once in a while, is our lovely studio animator. So she's the one who teaches animation classes here. Um, but yeah, I teach the art mentorship. The one that crushes your dreams. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, 
Canada actually is one of the highest prices for internet it's because we have so much land and things are really far apart so the infrastructure is expensive oh I didn't know that yeah no we're we're big if you want to if you want to compare our population to uh, America for all y'all Americans if any of y'all are American um America's population, I believe, is 300, somewhere around 300 million, right? America can fit inside Canada, and we have 37 million people, I believe. All of, all of Canada, like, most of the people are condensed down into either, um, like, Ontario, Quebec, and British Columbia. That's where most of us are, just in those three provinces, <laughs> the most urban ones. The rest of Canada is very, very rural. How are the animation classes? Are they for beginners too? Um, there is beginner animation, I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, I believe it's very step by step. You learn a Krita. I think Faye can answer that one a little bit better than I can. Faye or Yuri. I do not teach animation because I am A, bad at animation, and B, I'm bad at working in Krita. So... <laughs> India has 103 core people. I'm pretty sure India has a population of like a, like a billion or something. It's very similar to China, if I remember correctly. I think that Japan has a higher population than Canada does, which is really funny because Japan can fit into uh, Ontario. I think. Yeah, okay, cool. Faye answered it better than I did. <laughs> That's until we end. Okay, we should be okay. A bit of a perfectionist when it comes to feathers. I think that's my weakness. <laughs> it's just like every single time I draw feathers, I'm like, uh, it doesn't look natural enough. India is the second most populated country in the world. I can believe that. I believe it's either China or Russia that's first. Canada has one of the lowest people to people to land mass ratios. We're very, very large with a very, very small amount of people. Come to Canada. We got lots of land. Thank you. I've done some flipbook easy things, but always wanted to learn more. Goodness gracious. I'm sorry if my audio keeps cutting out. My headphones have been acting up. I'm getting a new pair soon. Just <laughs> it might be a couple weeks. So if my audio suddenly changes, it's because I now have a new headphone set. Love India is so magical, full of wildlife. Grateful I got to visit in 2014. Aww. I haven't been outside of this hemisphere. <laughs> I've stuck within this half of the world, like the, the Americas. I have never been outside of it, and I really want to be go outside of it. I want to visit somewhere. I love traveling. I was speaking with a Canadian woman. I can't believe I'm so happy. Nice. Multiple Canadian women. Uh, 
Just for fun, let's make this a little bit fluffier. I know that that's not how owl wings work, but I don't care. <laughs> oh, actually, no. If we have, like, the, the top three feather thingies here for the thumb bit. It wouldn't really be this fluffy, though. That's okay. We'll call it style. <laughs> Hopefully traveling can happen again soon, honestly, right? Did you miss the Taj Mahal? The Taj Mahal. How's COVID here? Uh, well, it's... It's like, okay. <laughs> We just opened up retail today again. We had it open last year for a while, and then everything started to get really bad around the holidays. We just reopened retail today. I tried to go to Winners today because I really wanted a pair of... I kind of messed up my leg, so my leg's a little bit messed up um, because apparently it's not great to jog on the spot when you don't wear shoes. Um, but that's my own fault. Um, but I need a new pair of shoes for indoor stuff, right? And I bought, I bought a pair online, but it's coming in like five to seven work days. And I'm like, I can't wait that long. So I wanted to go to Winners. I could buy like a temporary pair until my Adidas come in. But I went to Winners and the line was wrapped around the entire building. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> I own Winners for <laughs> Most countries are getting better, I think, with the vaccinations. Yeah, I, I think my second dose is booked for August. Yeah, and we were really slow in the beginning, 100%. Our vaccine, like, like, yeah, it, it, we're getting a little bit better, but our vaccinations were definitely really slow to roll out at first. Luckily, my entire family has gotten at least their first dose, so that's pr that's good. Parents got vaccinated last week, really happy for that. That's great! You ever just try to transform something and accidentally press cancel? Oh, in this program, yes. <laughs> in Photoshop, it's like it, you can kind of just keep it on the move tool and like you'll never have to worry about that, but in this program, yes. The bane of my existence. Your vaccine is co-vaccine. I see. Your parents, uh, I mean, I need a lot of money for the purchase. Oh, you guys have to pay for the vaccine. I remember when I had to book my vaccine and, like, I woke up, right? Because it was like, they opened up for 18 plus uh, back in May. And I was like, all right. Um, they opened up at like 7 a.m. or something, right? Or like 8. And I was like, all right, I got to wake up before 8. And I ended up getting up at 7.30ish. And <laughs> I was like, I went on the site and it let me in a little bit early. And I was like, oh cool so then i booked my vaccine by 7 58 or something so like two minutes before technically the vaccination appointments were supposed to open up but you know i i was i took my time i was all leisurely and i was like oh which day i think would be like the best for me right and i quickly chose what i wanted and then i got out and then like 20 minutes later or like five, two minutes later my friends are all texting like i can't get in there's a line of like three hundred thousand people and I was like, there were lions for you guys? I didn't, I wasn't part of that. <laughs> so I, lesson of the day is uh, get to places early because you won't regret it. But yeah, I skipped every single line. I was like, I don't know how I did that, but I'm not complaining. <laughs> I got my vaccine. I booked my second one and we're all good. Canada is now a snowy day or a normal day? Uh, well, it's the middle of the summer. Uh, right now it is 24 degrees Celsius. <laughs> so there's no snow. Um, our snow comes at around November. I know it's cold here, but like we're not, we're not uh, cold all year round. We're on the lower part of uh, Canada, so um, or the southern part of Canada, so we're not uh, too cold down here. You're thinking of none of it. None of it's like snow all year. <laughs> 
Are we getting some rain? I didn't know that. It says it's mostly cloudy. My computer updated and it has a it has a weather thing on the bottom of it now. <laughs> uh, yeah, they opened up one day before I scheduled my age group in Quebec. Oh, I see. Yeah, my uh, my age group was the last to be scheduled here in Ontario, or one of the last. My brother's age group was the last, technically. How do I draw these claws? I'm realizing I don't know how. Uh, so let me. I will. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. You always gotta stare at your your references. I'm like constantly looking at the clock. Uh, how much time I got? In Canada, which state is your institution present? Um, well, we have a, we're provinces, we're not states. Um, like I mentioned, most Canadians are in either British Columbia, Quebec, or <laughs> or Ontario, and we are within Ontario. We're where um, Toronto is, so it's like we're in the the bigger city kind of part of Canada. <laughs> I think a lot of other Canadians are like, yeah, it's all right. You're from a Toronto. You think you're like the, the center of the world, <laughs> which is fair. Toronto is the one place that most people know in Canada. Toronto and Ottawa, I think, are the two places that most people know. Oh, Vancouver as well. Ironic, because those are the three that are within the three provinces that I mentioned earlier. <laughs> I don't know. Ottawa? Is Ottawa in... Uh-oh! Don't know my geography well! <laughs> oh well. Um, but yeah, we're in Ontario. The studio is based in Canada. The snowy owl feet are like very, very fluffy. And I'm like. Yeah, the second leg would be covered by this tail. Oh, yeah, the original was a little bit skewed, wasn't it? Fun. Okay, cool. I guess I just automatically fix that for myself. Good stuff. Ontario. Ontario. O N T. A R I O Ontario I'm like debating on how much fluff I should add to the snowy owl. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't want it to be too intense, I suppose. Long time ago, having a deviant art was essential for digital artists, but I have the sensation this changed mostly to Instagram. Is it a good place to have your portfolio? Oh man, deviant art. I used to use deviant art as well. Um, deviant art is a bit infamous now. <laughs> Most people actually they don't like um, Instagram that much either, mostly just because the cropping kind of gets annoying when they're posting their work. A lot of artists, if you want like a a really professional place to put your work, then you go to ArtStation, which is like DeviantArt, but for professionals. Or, um, if you're a little bit more chill with it, then you go to Twitter. Because there, there's no image limit. You have to start an Instagram. You definitely can, if you want to. You have no Instagram account. Ah, I see. Yeah, I've had an Instagram since I was uh, 13, so I've had Instagram for a while. And it's changed a lot since I was 13. <laughs> so...
But yeah, uh, DeviantArt and Tumblr are kind of infamous, so people don't usually put their professional stuff there anymore. <laughs> and now 19, I see. Just apply for work and put yourself out there. Don't take no's personally and try to distinguish yourself with a style or genre. Work on your portfolio and be active in some art communities. Yes. Connections are so important. Get to know some people. Figure out people who are within your field. Learn to meet people who are within your field. And be active within your artistic community. Post your work. Get your name out there. And yeah, it's, it's a process. <laughs> it's not going to happen immediately. Nothing happens immediately. The hobbyist. I've tried Instagram. It feels strange. It is very strange. It's like... Instagram is like a social media that's not technically meant for artists, neither is Twitter. And it's like, they're they're kind of there where artists go to now. They're like where artists go to now because they're popular, but they're not ideal for artists, if that makes sense. ArtStation is the place that you go if you're like a really professional artist. But if you're a hobbyist, it's like Twitter or Instagram mostly. For OC artists, like original character artists, there's Toy House, but that one's a little bit less professional as well. Um, Tumblr's another one, but again, a little bit infamous. But yeah, you can try out Twitter if Instagram doesn't feel quite as nice. I use Instagram as a way of updating my artwork because it takes too long to update my website. Instagram can be toxic if you measure your success by followers and likes. Same thing with Twitter. Twitter can be very, very intoxicating as well. <laughs> yeah, some yells are very fluffy. Fluffy, fluffy birds. The best thing you can do for yourself is just turn on, turn off the capability for you to see your likes and dislikes. I have mine turned on just because I straight up don't remember how to turn it off, but like it doesn't bother me. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, yeah, okay. I'll try Twitter and look at ArtStation too, for sure. Yeah, ArtStation is very intimidating. It's where the real professionals go. <laughs> it's like if you see DeviantArt, it's very similar. It's just now it's like, oh, wow, everybody here has a job. <laughs> Anyone have any anime YouTube channels? Um, I mean, we do some sometimes like anime themed stuff. I will use ArtStation, although my art is not very professional. That's fine. It's usually where people just post their portfolios. If they can't make their own website. It's like a portfolio hosting website, basically. Even though it's technically a social media, ArtStation isn't very social. Again, it's like a big portfolio site for artists. Snowy Owl's got that big talons, big hunties, hunty, hunty birds, the big predators. And the way that their feathers are spaced allow them to have very, very silent flying. Which I think is really cool. I held a barn owl when I was a kid. And I remember there was like a little petting zoo that kind of showed up near the museum that I live near. And it was like... And they're like, oh... It's like, you want to come hold the barn owl? And I was like, heck yeah, I want to hold the barn owl. So I have a photo of myself when I was 10, and I have a barn owl on my arm. And that was pretty sweet, not going to lie. Channel name, please. I will subscribe. Um, Well, I, I only work on this channel, so... <laughs> Owls and wings and birds. Alright. Am 
I kind of got to do the same thing I did last week. Close these up just a little bit. Yes, currently I mourn the, the delay of God of War. <laughs> it's okay. I just... <laughs> I am scared it will become another cyberpunk. I say this to everybody. I'm like, listen, all right. Sony Santa Monica did it once. God of War 4 was perfect. No problem. Thanks for giving a good talk. No worries. Thanks for popping in. We're almost done here. We got about 20 more minutes. Uh, 19 ish more minutes, I believe. Let's see if I have time to do like full, full color because I'm pretty sure I can only do flats from my estimate, but we'll see if I can really speed through this. <laughs> Put my, uh, Put my speed to the test, I suppose. thing I like about Medibang's paint bucket is like it's it you can expand it instead of having to rely on tolerance which is really nice you just sound like cute girls I don't think I'm that cute even you're older than me barely <laughs> you said your age I'm barely older than you uh, we might actually be the same age <laughs> Okay. Oh shoot, is this on the wrong way? Okay. I got so scared for a second. <laughs> I hope I haven't been drawing this on the wrong way or the whole time. Haha. -ha. That would have been awful. Listen, paint bucket is great for a lot of things, but sometimes it's faster just to color it in with a with the pen. I was afraid about Ratchet and Clank ending up like Cyberpunk, but overall it's well received. Oh, that's good. Ratchet and Clank has great design. Um, yeah, I'm horrified about God of War. Because I just like, I'm like, listen. <laughs> you did it once, you could do it again at one game of the year in 2018. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> it's fine. Because that story is so good. Like, it's so good. It's so well written. Every art mentorship that I teach... Every term I mention God of War at least once. Always. It's the same. It's always the same. I'm like, you want to learn about character design? Okay, let's talk about uh, let's talk about God of War. <laughs> it's always the same. I'm going, okay, thanks for popping in. I'm not working in pure white for the feathers, just because when you work in pure white, a lot of the times it can look a little bit flat, so that's why I'm kind of working with a, a really light gray this time. I might actually switch it up to a light, a really like kind of cream color-ish. And of course there are no... Yeah, that looks a little bit better. There's no, um, as I expected, there's, there's no uh, contiguous, which is a... See you. Um, which is a function on Photoshop um, for the paint, but that's okay. We can work without it. That's what this is for. Usually a little bit. Nope. <laughs> like color picking with my eyes. I'm like, okay, what's the color that I need right now? That's close enough. 
Yeah, even for your eyes, usually it's nice to work on something that isn't perfect white. Same with your teeth, because usually they're not perfect white regardless. For cartoons, they tend to work in perfect white, but it doesn't. you don't need to do that. And your pupils should always be drawn in the back of your eye, not in the front. Alright, let's check this pattern real quick, because I'm really bad at drawing feather patterns. A lot of digital artists choose near battles. What do you want to color? <laughs> what don't you want to color? <laughs> Sorry, I had to check something. Okay. Yeah, when you do patterns on wings and patterns on a lot of things, it's better not to line it. Um, when you add like outlines to your patterns and your stuff like that, that it can end up looking really, really messy um, and really, really busy. So usually you just want to rely on color for that sort of thing. Right, so if there's like a feather pattern, then you're going to want to rely on your color for that instead of the lines. Because if you add in your lines, then it can look really, really busy and too much going on and stuff like that. And use a different brush for your patterns, because usually it's nice to have some different texture in there. Especially when it's fur or feathers or something like that. But it is all corresponding to whatever style you're kind of trying to, trying to create. Sometimes people like, you know, the perfect stripes or the perfect something or other. Right, personally, I'm a really big fan of, like, the imperfect kind of look when it comes to digital painting and all that fun stuff. Sorry, especially when I get to this part of like drawing the pattern in, I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to focus because I'm like, I don't get what's happening. And another tip they usually, like, I think I've mentioned it before, but, like, try to zoom out when you're painting or rendering or doing anything like that. Mostly because 99% of the time nobody's going to zoom in on your work, right? If you have, like, a little mistake in the corner and, like, it's like, oh, somebody else is watching it, it's like, or looking at your work, <clears throat> they'll see it and, like, oh, that's neat. And then they'll just move on, right? <laughs> like, nobody's really going to, I'm one of part of, like, the very few percentage of people who will actually zoom in on the work that they look at, but... In terms of, like, you know, illustration, 99% of the time, nobody will zoom in on your work. So if you still have brush strokes or, like, you know, um, yeah, if you got, like, brush strokes or leftover stuff that's still in your composition, right, 
that you're like, oh, it's so imperfect and I can't do it properly. Trust me, nobody cares. <laughs> That's why a lot of foliage is done with like foliage brushes or like it's usually like a lot of blobs that make up trees and stuff. And that's fine. Especially if you're like comic backgrounds, you're gonna get a lot of like just gradients and whatever. That's fine. That's completely fine. Right? If I zoom in now, it's like, wow, it's all just scribbles. And that's why you just stay zoomed out and nobody needs to know about it. Because <laughs> cohesively, it looks fine. It's better to focus on the big picture compared to the little bits. Trying to keep both sides of the wing somewhat consistent. Yeah, big wings are just so fun to do. But they are a pain. Absolutely. If you have to do them over and over. <laughs> they are 100% a pain to do over and over. I feel bad for anybody who has characters with wings. You know what I'm saying? Jesse says it's fine. It's really fine. Thank you, Yuri. <laughs> all is fine and all is good. You have to worry about a lot less when it comes to art than you might think. Almost every artist that I meet is a perfectionist and I'm like, but why? Like, I get it. I'm fair. I'm fairly a perfectionist as well. As in, like, I just, I judge myself very harshly. <laughs> but trust her. <laughs> Thank you. Um, as in, I'm just, like, a very harsh judge on myself. Um, but when it comes to other people, like, even my students, I'm like, listen, man. It's like, they get upset. It's like, I can't figure out how to draw this bush. I'm like, where's the bush? It's like, it's in the background. And, like, and I'm like, nobody's going to see it, man. <laughs> if that bush is, like, in the background and, like, kind of hidden with the trees dude just blur it and move on <laughs> trust me there's a difference between perfection and insanity Okay. How fast do you think I can shade this? <laughs> Let's go. That's too saturated. There we go. Yeah, the multiply works a little bit differently on Medivig than it does on Photoshop. It keeps a lot of the saturation in there in this program. The values are a little bit different in Photoshop. What I have a hankering to do is to make my own phone charms. Like, you know, like the, the acrylic charms you can get, like, to hang off your phones or your keys? I really want to make those for my, just for myself, though, for now. Some people have said, like, oh, you should make merch, and I'm like, maybe one day. Um, but I really want to make one for myself, because I know that you can get, like, samples from some places, which are just, like, a single charm, and I'm like, that's all I need for myself, you know? This is my way to fulfill um, my need for more God of War merch. 
<laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you, Faye. I could even just, like... Because it's, like... They're not, the like, the most expensive. Like, if you get, like, some places where it's just, like... Oh, yeah, you can get, like, a single charm. And then we'll send you, like, a... We'll send you, like, a sample of it. It doesn't come with any straps or anything. But, like, that's fine with me. Because, like, I have a, a bunch of kits for that. Um, but... Yeah, I have a hankering just to, like, make my own charms for fun. <laughs> yeah, these wings will have a very big shadow on them. I agree. Thank you, Grace. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out where the most shadow would most likely hit. Especially when you're drawing wings, you don't have to shade every single feather, right? A lot of the times the feathers will all kind of like, again, like I mentioned, they kind of lay down flat. So it's like you can kind of leave them unshaded for the most part. Right, unless if like a section of the wing covers another section of the wing. But like all these feathers, you can just leave them unshaded, right? They're not three-dimensional enough to warrant a full shadow. All right, and the lighting, which is very, very quick. I could probably put some subsurface on this. Why not? <laughs> we'll see how I feel. Actually, we're close enough to the we got some time. I can do that. Subsurface doesn't take that long. And like I said before, for those of you who don't know, subsurface scattering is the... Um, the skin is translucent, so it'll have a little bit of a reddish tint to it. This needs to be a bit darker. Uh, that is the hue saturation slider, and that thing can help you in a pinch. I mean, it can really help you if you're in a pinch. <laughs> There are more advanced ways that you can do it that are more for, like, photo editing, but, like, those are not here in Medibang. Um, but, yeah, if you ever need to, like, oh, no, that color is kind of off, and you can just use a hue saturation slider, you're good, dude. And the face is looking a little bit flat, too, so let's bring some dimension back into there. Because I think you could use a little bit of warmth. Just a little bit of blushing usually helps a character feel a little bit more alive. So usually the face has more dimensions to it than just the one color, right? There is more realistic stuff you could do to it. That's a lot trickier. And that will take definitely more than the less than a minute that I have left. Um, yeah, I probably come back here too. Just to give it a little bit of color differentiation. have to watch subsurface scattering stream highlights yes subsurface scattering is so fun it's like if you never if you've never tried it before do it oh my god i've been doing it as of late for my comic pages and it's like the best uh 
as rectangle, excellent. And then we can just make this a kind of dull gray, grayish blue. Nice. That gives it kind of a wintry, cold look. We'll do it once the stream is over. Yeah. And with that, though, that's the end of the stream. <laughs> Let us move this over a little bit, though, because it's a little bit unequal and it's annoying me. Don't worry about perfection, guys. Me moves the rectangle over a minuscule bit so it can be centered. Um, but yeah, guys, that is the end of the stream for me because I just finished this illustration and we have this one over here too. So if you did not know you're new with us here, be sure to check out um, our website where you can check out our class offerings because I keep saying our, it's not just me. We are a team of artists. Um, hey, Jesse, any tips on male bodies? Um, very similar to women. It's just that men have are a bit less curved they tend to be a little bit more straight laced um we have an anatomy stream though and we have an anatomy highlights which you can check out um on the channel um but yeah check out our our website for our class offerings and this file along with this file will both be available as jpegs on our discord which you can download keep them they are all yours um Keep them safe and do whatever you want with them. Just don't um, repost them. Uh, but you got to join our Discord if you want the JPEGs for both of these files. But you'll notice that there are layers on both of my files here. And if you'd like access to those, you're going to have to join our Patreon, which is where you can get access to working files every other week. And the other week that you are on our Patreon, you're going to get behind the scenes stuff. So you'll hear from me uh, about what's happening at the studio and stuff that may be coming up soon. Um, but yeah, guys, overall... Thanks so, so much for joining. Next week, I believe it is reptiles, something like that. Um, but yeah, we'll go over reptiles next week. Again, another one within our animal streams. Um, but yeah, I'll see y'all there. Thanks so much for joining. Um, thanks so much for the stream. No worries, Dudu. Thank you for popping in again. Um, but with that, though, thanks so much for joining. I'll see y'all next week. Bye-bye.